Every time my dad goes on a business trip, I panic. You see, most of my dad's business is based in Mexico. He describes battered cities where feuding drug lords fight to gain control and where anarchy has displaced the law. Even though my dad will only spend a couple of hours in these towns, there are millions of families who call these war zones home. Is it right for kids to worry about getting caught up in the crossfire of a shootout? You're probably thinking, it's not my problem. But in reality, it's a struggle for power, fueled by the 22 million Americans who use marijuana. This war has corrupted an army, infiltrated the police force, and disrupted the civilian population for many years. Due to its illegality, marijuana generates a high profit for Mexican drug lords and gangs. Americans who use pot fund 25% of the cartel's annual $39 billion profit. According to The Economist, two-thirds of the marijuana distributed throughout America has been imported illegally over the Mexican border. The legalization of marijuana would cut off their main income source and ultimately generate a safe environment for Mexican cities and U.S. border towns. It was ironic to grow up in El Paso, Texas, one of the safest cities in the United States, and have to drive back far as Mexico, the murder capital of the world, on my way to school. What's separating these two different parts of the country? Nothing. Culturally, El Paso is, is similar. Culturally, El Paso is, is the same as far. My five-year-old self thought that growing up with kids who didn't speak English was normal. That growing up with people who went to Juarez for the weekend was cool. And that growing up with Mexican gangsters, referred to as cholos, was whatever. <laughs> However, in 2011, eight people a day died in Juarez alone. It affected thousands of El Paso families. My friends lost family members, best friends, and neighbors. According to the LA Times, on May 13th, 2012, about 50 mangled bodies were found on the side of the road, decapitated, with hands and feet chopped off in Cadareta Jimenez. And on May 3rd, 2012, nine bodies hung under an overpass of a highway in Nuevo Laredo, along with 14 others decapitated. In Veracruz, 96 bodies were laid out in public squares and roadways. Mexico has faced these true horrors for a full six years. And we must ultimately recognize that the source of this bloodshed is driven by the American population. Adults, college students, high schoolers, us. Mexican drug cartels are mass murderers who are free to do what they want because money buys them power. They have bribed and infiltrated most of the Mexican police forces. They recruit thousands of Mexican citizens and even people in the United States. Although the cartels behave differently, they each create havoc around the country. The three most famous cartels are La Familia, Sinaloa, and the Zetas. According to the Huffington Post, the Zetas terrorize the population, killing innocent victims every day, while Sinaloa leaves the population alone, only dealing with the people involved with drugs. Not only is the Mexican government fighting a war against the cartels, the cartels are fighting against each other. This escalates the violence among Mexican cities and U.S. border towns as they fight to gain control over the flow of drugs and money. The United States ends up spending billions of dollars in efforts to solve this problem. As Mexican families are fleeing from the violence into our southern states, Border Patrol has to strengthen immigration and security policies. Also, according to the LA Times, the United States has spent more than $2 billion in efforts to strengthen Mexico's security. We have sent drones, sniffer dogs, police forces, and U.S. intelligence agents. U.S. intelligence forces have killed many wanted drug leaders and have trained and corrupted police forces how to properly fill out police reports and investigations. Prohibition, we have previously seen in our history, has proven to be ineffective. The prohibition of alcohol in 1920 backfired, causing more people to smuggle alcohol illegally over the borders. Similarly, marijuana needs to be legally monitored. Most current laws in the United States and in Mexico prohibit the use of marijuana. However, as you guys know, Colorado and Washington are the only two states to have ratified the law for legalization. Their bold move has gotten the citizens of other 
United States and Mexico in trade. Even though Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto opposes legalization, he told CNN that according to these circumstances, he is rethinking the law. Mayors across the country of Mexico are urging bills to be passed. As legalization becomes more of an option, people are starting to change their minds. The legalization of marijuana goes beyond the right to get high. It is the answer to the violent bloodshed and corruption many U.S. citizens hardly hear of, but are immensely a part of. My dad is in Mexico right now. Heck yeah, I'm panicking.